So this is this is this is the forcing term. It, uh, it's F zero times cos omega t. And the the way uh, I, uh, we discussed already, we solve this equation is. Uh, we make this equal to zero and try to solve that equation equal to zero first and that we have done already uh, that is the damped harmonic oscillator and what we know is that thing uh, wherever we start it it will go and it will eventually stop uh, the, the, that solution that will that will be as time goes on it will get less and le uh, the less and less the amplitude. And so then this term, which we also need to put into the solution of the equation, we have to have this uh, effect also, um, that, that will then take over. But let, uh, I'm just giving you the idea how, how it will run. Uh, so let's do it. Now, one simple way of of doing uh, something like this uh, is to write uh, this is in this way, and then uh, here is the same. Now, of course, that's not the same equation which we have uh, there. These two are not the same, but if I take the real part of this, then I get that. So we, we rather solve this equation, and then uh, we take the real part, and then we have the, uh, have the uh, equation. And that's a very general method uh, which one uses uh, in, uh, in equations of this type. Uh, now, uh, if you do this, uh, we, we make again an ansatz. Do you know the word ansatz? It's a German word, but it's used in English very much, and it means an initial start. We, we, we put something. Uh, we don't know whether it's right or not, but we put it there, and then we see, we work with it, and we see what it happens, and then at the end we see, oh yeah, that was a good thing yeah? to, to start off with. So it's sort of a starting position. Uh, you will find it in the English literature also quite a lot, uh, uh, but it's a German word and it means, un, uh, it's, it's an ansatz. <coughs> uh, so uh, we make such an ansatz, uh, which is we say, let us assume, or let us start with A e to the i omega t plus theta. Let us assume that will solve this, this equation. Uh, and I'm uh, specifically looking now at the uh, particular integral. As we've said, the solution uh, it has two terms. Uh, the one is the complementary function, and the other one is the particular integral. Uh, <coughs> the comp uh, complementary function we have already solved. It is the damped oscillator. Uh, but we now need to solve the particular integral. And, and so, uh, and for this particular integral, I'm making this ansatz. Okay? And so let's do it quickly. Uh, if, I, uh, if I differentiate this twice, uh, I get, uh, well, I get an A in any case in front of it. Uh, or let me put it this way. And then I get minus omega squared uh, a and then this exponential again. No? Okay? And then in the next term we get plus i 
B uh, omega and then again the A and the, the, the same exponential up there. And then we get here, it's just uh, K times A uh, times the exponential. And that is equal to uh, <clears throat> That is equal to F0 uh, e to the i omega t plus theta 0. This exponential is actually, let's, let us write it here once so that we can see it explicitly. It's actually omega t uh, plus theta. And so this term comes here and here and so on. And so we can, uh, we can uh, divide by uh, I t e to the i omega t uh, theta. And then we get here F0 and that's exponential and the omega t goes away because we cancel it right through and it is then i uh, theta zero minus theta okay sorry hmm? oh okay Okay. Uh, okay, then it's phi zero, okay? <clears throat> and this thing here, I will call phi. This difference, I will just call phi. Huh? So, so it is, that is, uh, a difference of two phases, initial phase, and, uh, uh, and, and we will talk about that uh, just now a little bit. Uh, and uh, uh, and now we can go and take the write the, the real part of this and the imaginary part it is f0 cos phi plus f0 <laughs> times i sine phi and uh, that is equal to all of this and uh, if you allow me to do this by rubbing uh, out uh, doing this we have actually we have actually taken these these factors out, huh? so I'm t I'm just rubbing them away now, so I don't need to rewrite them. Uh, but that's what we have done in order to to get rid of that term there. So we have this this expression. Hmm? Including. Uh, uh, yeah, well, this we have this expression. This is this, huh? Okay. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, of course, the e two e cancels. Uh, in, in that, uh, yeah. Okay. So what we now see is that. Uh, uh, F zero sine phi is equal to B omega times A. And uh, and F zero cosine phi is equal to A 
uh, k minus omega squared. Mm -hmm. <coughs> m omega squared, yeah, that's right. M omega squared. Okay. Uh, and so uh, we can we can get rid of these things in order to solve for phi. Uh, we can just divide this and then we have the ta tangent of phi is equal to b over omega k minus m omega squared. <coughs> and uh, that uh, determines the difference of the phases of the two uh, solutions. And now we can calculate, so we know how to calculate phi here, and we know how to calculate uh, A uh, by just realizing that if this is the tan, then the sines, this is the sine squared and this is the cosine squared. Uh, so we uh, we, we take the sine squared and the cosine squared, or let me just write it down, then you will see what I'm saying, uh, is if I want to ca calculate A, I will do it this way, that I say it is equal to F0 uh, divided by B omega, and then the sine phi, and uh, if I want to have the, if I want to calculate the sine phi, uh, I know what the tan is, and then you can convince yourself very quickly uh, that it is actually someone said that he knows the answer, so write it down, please. Come, write it down. <laughs> oh. Yes. Okay, uh, it's correct, of course, but I wanted to do it. Uh, I wanted to save a few steps. <laughs> so, so I, I just want to tell you, I can see from this thing uh, what the sign is, because. Uh, I will, I will just write it down and then I'll tell you why I can see that that is the sign. Uh, th this is the sign. Sine phi is this divided by the square root of, uh, of this squared. I uh, know uh, this squared, the cosine squared, k minus m omega squared. Uh, uh, all squared plus b omega squared. You see, if, uh, if I divide it by this, uh, then if I take sine squared plus cosine squared, I get 1. Yeah? Uh, so, so this is, if you've done it your way, you would have worked a little longer than I did, but <laughs> but that's that's what is it right? Yes. yes. Hmm? Okay. Uh, so we know what A is, and we know what 
uh, what uh, phi is, uh, we can we can calculate both of these quantities. And and the only one I really want to uh, discuss with you uh, is is what this a is, and uh, we can. Is this actually right? Uh, uh, well, we can, of course. Yeah, we can, of course, cancel that. And uh, <clears throat> uh, so, yeah. So, it's, so we 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 have that this function a is equal to f zero divided by this square root. And if I take a squared, which is the amplitude square, then I can leave out this sign and I can just have a k minus m omega squared uh, plus b omega squared. And, and if, I divide, if I divide the m through here, Hmm? F is also squared. And uh, if I divide... Ah, it's good. You, you all were wide awake. I'm still asleep. <laughs> uh, <coughs> so what you see here... Uh, uh, you, we know what k over m is. What, what is k over m? K omega, omega naught squared. Omega naught squared. Mm -hmm. And so, um, uh, so we actually could uh, divide this by, by m, uh, uh, take the m out here, and we have uh, k over uh, m here, and we take this out. And then we have here omega 0 squared minus omega squared. Huh? Omega zero squared minus omega squared. Hmm? Squared. Yeah, like here. Hmm? Huh? Okay. <coughs> and so the m which I take out must be squared too. Okay. <coughs> uh, Now, now this is this is this is actually the most interesting result of of this this point. Uh, it it tells you that if you use the if we're looking at the swing, yeah? if the frequency which with which you swing is close to the natural frequency this thing will be big. Uh, so in other words, what I would want to do is I want to dra uh, draw a diagram of what is A squared like. And, uh, I, and as a function of omega, because I'm going to do the swinging, and, and I have to know uh, how, how I should do that. Uh, and and the thing is, what I need to do is uh, to swing close to a frequency omega. This is a frequency to a frequency omega, which is close to the frequency of the of the uh, natural swing. It's actually not exactly the same, as you can easily check for yourself if you want to get the maximum value of this expression here, it is, uh, uh, it, uh, you have to take this term into account and that shifts the, the, the maximum. Uh, uh, if you want to take the maximum of this, you must find the minimum of this. And the minimum of this is not at omega zero, but is slightly shifted. Huh? So, but, so we can calculate now with what a, f a frequency we need to apply the swing and uh, uh, and and so the thing looks like this if we are totally out then uh, 
the, the amplitude will be very small and as we get close here it will become high and then it will go down again I mean this uh, uh, the, uh, and the maximum here is is close to if B is fairly small that is the damping is fairly small that maximum will be fairly close to omega zero and you can convince yourself about that uh, I don't remember it off heart but it's something like the maximum the omega for maximums uh, swing is something like uh, omega zero minus uh, uh, minus something which is proportional to B a factor proportional to B <coughs> uh, so what you do is you take this term and you differentiate it and you find the minimum uh, of that and that gives you the maximum uh, uh, of the thing uh, so, so uh, the, the interesting thing uh, the, there are lots of interesting things just from this little model you can study many different examples but let's just look at the main features the height of this will be determined by what the damping well of course by F0 but also by, by what the damping is so if the damping is big then this curve will look much more like like this it will be broader and it will be lower you won't be swinging as high and you can get all these things out of out of this equation uh, <coughs> uh, and uh, and if you uh, have basically no damping uh, then it will go very high and uh, and this is uh, uh, this is this is a real physical feature uh, which happens which happens uh, for instance uh, if you have uh, windows glassed very hard in the, your glass of windows very hard and cars come uh, go by they can actually introduce a vibration on the window so that the window breaks uh, this is uh, this is quite possible and uh, there is the famous story uh, I don't remember what the name of the bridge was but in the United States there was does one of the tutors know uh, I've heard the story a lot, but I don't remember the name of it. Yeah. Oh, uh, the, the wind blew over? Yeah. Yeah, it's called the. Uh, the, the uh, it's, it's, uh, you, you'll even find it in textbooks. I could look it up. Uh, you'll find it in textbooks referred to, to this bridge. Uh, what happened is that bridge. Uh, was constructed and it didn't have a very big B it was a very solid very strong and, and it didn't have any flexibility in it and so when uh, I, th I was it the wind or the cars but any anyway one of the two or both uh, <coughs> uh, that uh, that caused uh, such a term basically a, a vibration on the bridge and 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 was dry i i thought it was car the cars are driving the millennium bridge in london as well yeah um, and they had to close it for a while because it was meant to be open in 2000 and it was late because the passengers were causing a vibration they were causing a vibration so so uh, you can you can think uh, this is this is where physics comes into the real world you can think I'll make it as, as, as solid as possible and you are making a mistake uh, <coughs> uh, you must actually allow for uh, for, for the uh, uh, vibrations to dissipate dissipate the word means you know it go away so dissipate huh? so uh, DCP, uh, <coughs> uh, so uh, <coughs> uh, 
so if you don't, if it, uh, but you can you can see all these sort of things. Uh, you you see from from this simple simple model. Uh, what is also interesting, uh, if you want to study a little further, and I'm I'm inviting you to do this. I'm not going to check whether you do it, uh, but if you like to do it. You can, you can go and calculate what is this phi. And this phi is, has to do with the, uh, with the uh, difference of the, as we have calculated here, uh, of the applied force and the response. And that can be quite far away from each other. Uh, it can be uh, 180 degrees different. So you, you shift it in a certain way, and the response comes in very, uh, comes in very much la uh, 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 later. And that, how, how that response, the, this phi changes, is also a function of uh, the, the damping term, which in itself is also uh, interesting how, how this, uh, this thing uh, works. Um, <clears throat> For someone who really wants to play with this thing, this is actually quite an interesting, it's, you, you see it's such a simple thing and it, it uh, has in it uh, many, many uh, consequences, effects. You can, you can look at it and, 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 and study it. And the, the one thing uh, I believe, and I haven't done it, uh, but I, I think if you calculate the total energy. Uh, you see this thing is in the steady state. It swings the same way all the time. But I think if you do the calculation, and I would challenge someone who has some extra time to do it, and do it numerically, uh, uh, that the energy over a period over one period of, of the swing is not a constant. Because we ha uh, but it comes back to the, uh, to the value. So, so what we have is actually two effects here. Uh, we are pumping energy. So I'm assuming, uh, the, uh, I'm assuming that the uh, complementary function has already died away. Uh, you know, you, that is the way you start. You start the swing already. But you can just start it from zero, and then the complementary function uh, wouldn't, wouldn't be there in any case. So, so you can imagine you start this thing from zero, and of course it will build up. It will take some time to, get, uh, to build up. But if it, if it gets to a steady state, then the swing will be, you will ha have this constant swing the, uh, the whole time. But, uh, I would imagine, and I looked a little bit at the equations, that the energy over the swing, over the period of the swing, is not, is not constant. Uh, and if someone shows us it is constant, <coughs> then I will have to withdraw my, my, uh, my comment. So we have the harmonic oscillator, which is driven driven by that term, and we have, it is oscillating at a certain, certain energy. And we, and at this point, we have the kinetic energy only, and at this, and here we have only the, uh, uh, here we have the uh, potential energy only, and here we have the kinetic energy only. And so you can actually write down for this, this uh, oscillator, you can write down an equation in which you have the uh, kinetic energy, the potential energy, and then there's a driving force. Uh, but, uh, so the but the driving force is, uh, uh, is cancelled uh, by, by the absorption. Uh, 
you see, without the driving force, we have seen that this thing goes like this. This is, this is the complementary function. It, it, it would have this value. Here I plot x, and there I plot x dot. And so it, it dies away. Uh, but uh, we pump energy into it, and that is done by this F0. And the, the question is, would I, which I think uh, if you like to play with and, and, and check your Python abilities, uh, if you go and ca you just use this formula and, and calculate uh, the kinetic energy and the, uh, and the potential energy and see whether those together are constant. We know on, on average they, they, they are constant because the swing always comes back to this value. Uh, if we, after a time when we have a stability in, in the position, uh, uh, it comes back to this value but in the meantime, it could, and this is what I suspect, it could do something like this. You know, that the energy goes down a little and up a little and so on, and then it gains again. So, so that the energy is pumped in at certain time and is, uh, uh, is uh, 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 drained away uh, through, through the uh, B dot term. Uh, at, at another time. So, so that there's this interplay and this interplay is not uh, balanced uh, throughout the, the, the period of that. Uh, I, I would suspect that is what's happened, uh, happening. Uh, uh, but uh, it's, I tried to, I tried to uh, write the equations for that, uh, but they get a little messy. Uh, and, uh, and I thought I wouldn't produce them in any case for you. It's, uh, but for those who want to experiment with this a little, uh, they, they, uh, they, they should do so, and uh, maybe come in next week and, uh, and just tell us, this is what happened, and I drew it, and this is how it looks. Huh? That would be nice. Uh, uh, okay, uh, so, so uh, what we have now done uh, quite a bit uh, over the the past week is we have looked uh, at systems uh, where there's an, there's an energy which we, we start off with. We have some energy and that energy we want to use to do some work. So there's a path and this is the work we want to do. But the work, we won't get necessarily all the work done like the, uh, like the muet, the seagull. Uh, if it drops, it doesn't, all its work doesn't go into what, it, all the energy it has doesn't go into work. Some of it goes into what we will call, uh, what we will call heat. Uh, or in general, we call it heat. Uh, it's something we don't actually know what it is uh, yet. Uh, <clears throat> uh, but this brings us, and, and in this specific case, uh, we, have, uh, we have this process and we're feeding, we're feeding uh, work into it. So we're feeding uh, work into this system and so we're feeding work in, we're losing we're losing, any, uh, we're losing uh, the heat and we're getting some product of, of work outside there. And this is the analysis uh, you can see uh, if we think of anything we want to do in, uh, in energy, we will have to think of these different different aspects, that some, some you lose and some you put back and so on, and you have to calculate all these things 
in order to to make a a, a prediction about or, or a, an assessment about uh, uh, what energy you have. Now, this these sort of diagrams, which I will later draw a little different, are typical diagrams uh, from a different field of physics, which is called. Hmm? Thermodynamics, yeah. And thermodynamics uh, has laws at w as well. And uh, it actually, and there is a law in thermodynamics which says energy is conserved. Okay? And it, uh, what it actually says is. Uh, that if you have energy and you have a process and you start off with a certain amount of energy then that will go into two parts the one is is work and the other one is heat and so you divide the energy into two parts in something called work and something called heat now, roughly speaking, as we have, uh, have discussed so far, uh, work is that part of the energy which is, we think is useful. Huh? So it's something which we describe in, in detail. Uh, we have this thing falling down, and we, we know this is, this, is, this is something we want. And, uh, and the heat is something we can't do anything about. It, it, it just happens because uh, uh, of, of the process we're looking at. And uh, we're not very happy about heat. We would actually like to put our energy all in, into work and, and not uh, sort of waste it into, in, into heat. And the question is, uh, what is this heat? And um, I think if you start reading about all these things, uh, you will immediately uh, get a term called entropy. Uh, and uh, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just spend about five minutes to talk about entropy with you. I just want to know what is entropy? A disorder of the system. Okay? And what can you say more about entropy? It's always increasing. And so let's let's just look. So there is there's a new thing which we actually have already encountered. And that is, there's an arrow of time. Hmm? You know of arrow of time? You can't, going, if we take a, uh, if we take a ball and we let, we drop it down, and we, we film it, we get, uh, 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 mean to film it for us, how it drops down. And we say, uh, uh, let the, uh, just, just turn the film round that it plays from, uh, from the end to, to front. Will you see the same thing? Will you see something which is, which is, makes sense? If you get, if you get someone uh, uh, at the Olympic Games uh, jumping, jumping into a swimming, uh, swimming pool uh, and you do a film of that, will you get, if you turn it back, will you get someone who jumps out of the swimming pool and gets onto the, uh, up there? So, so there's, an arrow, there's an arrow of time and we have already we have already uh, encountered it 
uh, without discussing it. Because this, this thing that drops, uh, the, the, uh, the force, the additional force, K times V, is not reversible, time reversible. If I change the time from plus to a negative, uh, I will not get something uh, which makes sense. Uh, or if I take this diagram, if I, have an, if, if I have a harmonic oscillator, I start here and, and I have a damped harmonic oscillator. It goes like this and eventually it ends there. I will not have an harmonic oscillator which sits there and then just starts moving and, and go around and around and so on. I won't have that. Uh, so this is, this is something uh, which we call the arrow of time. Arrow showing only one direction. It's unfortunate. Uh, I would like to become younger, but uh, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> There's an arrow of time. Huh? Okay, and 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 uh, and this this thing here, Q, is uh, so the energy which we lose in such a process to heat. We can't just say, okay, let's turn this around and let the energy go in there, and then we we get we get more. Uh, well, this heat is now here, and uh, so let's rather. Instead of adding to the heat, we subtract some of the heat and we, we put it into that. We can't do that. Uh, and so this is this concept of, uh, uh, of uh, entropy, uh, that the heat, the heat this, this error of time is closely related to the concept of entropy. Uh, so... Uh, who wants to say more about entropy? <coughs> yeah. Okay. Um, it's like saying if you have hot, hot water and cold water, and if you mix them, it wouldn't be possible to separate the hot and the cold water in the mixture to, to have hot and cold water again. That's right. I think that's fine. So, and uh, what's your name? I forgot your name. Simon. So the entropy uh, has to do with order. And so uh, when we say something is, he there's heat, uh, we, we actually mean something a little different. Uh, we actually mean uh, we've, lost, we've lost order. And why do we lose order? I mean, if I take uh, if I take uh, two balls and I hang the, hang them on a, or three or four and I put them on a string and I let them, uh, uh, then at some point I get the same thing back. Uh, even quite complicated things. They 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 knock against each other and so on, and you get go through all sorts of diagrams, and eventually you get the same thing back. At least if you start with two. I mean, I hit a ball with one ball and it goes away and then it comes back and hits this one and it goes away and so So I'm not really losing order. I'm just exchanging things. Uh, but we are here talking about something else. We're not just exchanging things. We, we are doing it just in one direction. And so why is this? Ibrahim, you must know. Well, it has to do with the Big Bang. <laughs> with the Big Bang. The universe was all in order a long time ago. And as uh, time goes by, we lose this order. Even if we have, um, we, 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 we as you said, that we get the same uh, configuration as we started, it's already uh, have 
changed in time, not only in space, or, or not only in, uh, in the configuration. Time has gone by, so it has changed from the different from the previous one. Yeah, Ibrahim has read some some very very deep thoughts in books, uh, uh, which uh, and there's lots of discussion about all this. Why is there an error of time? And and I I know what he, but let's say we are we are ignorant. We don't know about the Big Bang and and, and things like that. And <laughs> we we're totally ignorant. We just. Uh, <coughs> We're just in this room and we're just making measurements and, and, and things like that. Uh, we don't know about all these other things. Uh, why is it uh, that nevertheless uh, we, we can understand uh, what, uh, what the error of time is? And so, uh, who knows? Who knows the definition of entropy? Hmm? Equation. Equation. Hmm? Do you want to write it down? He doesn't want to write it down. You see. Uh, you want to write it down. Okay, that's good. <coughs> K is the Boltzmann constant. Z is the particle function. Some of over states of the given system. Okay. Okay. Uh, this. Uh, uh, so, um, let me write down another equation. Uh, he's, not, he's not wrong, he's not wrong. He knows what he's talking about. Let me write down another equation. K is equal to, uh, S is equal to K, Boltzmann constants, log omega, uh, where omega is the number of states Microcanonical. So, so in statistical mechanics, we're we're talking about uh, different uh, uh, ensembles. Uh, we're look, uh, talking about the microcanonical ensemble, the canonical ensemble, and the uh, grand canonical en ensemble. Uh, but uh, th that's just words for the time being. Um, the microcanonical ensemble is an isolated system, a system in which everything is in a box. The air and my particle which falls down, everything is there. Uh, but uh, what I am then looking at is the log of omega, which is the number of possible states in which uh, all these different particles can be. And how many particles are there in a, in a box? So you more or less. Hmm? Yeah? Avocado's number. Well, how, well, how much is it? It, uh, someone says it very clearly, 6 times 10 to the power, tw 23. That is an enormous number of part uh, 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 particles. And each of these particles can be at very many places. And so this, the number of states situations in which this system can be is enormously big and if I start off with with one we call it a configuration where I have labeled everybody everybody I know exactly where they are and I label them including my ball that is falling down um, if, if I 
uh, if I label all these uh, uh, states and uh, I look at it just a moment later because there's no interaction between this ball and all these other particles there are so many possibilities there's no chance of getting the same configuration back again uh, so so uh, the uh, the entropy is uh, in in the microcanonical ensemble which is uh, a closed system uh, has so many possibilities that it will I will never have a reoccurring uh, 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 configuration yes Uh, uh, this thing is is is, is quite a, a quite a different thing from this. This is not. Uh, this is uh, this thing is called the the uh, the partition function, and uh, it's it's not the it's not the number of states. It's the partition function, uh, which uh, uh, is. Uh, I don't know whether we'll get to that. Uh, I, I don't want to get to too much thermodynamics, but the partition function is a very useful quantity and it has more to do with an open system the microcanonical system is a closed system uh, in which uh, the this thing is valid E is the work plus the heat this is this is a this is a closed system and so every, there's no heat going away. Uh, now, if, uh, uh, but you, you also have systems which are connected to what we call a heat bath. And then the heat is flowing out of that system. And, that, uh, and then you use a different mechanism. Uh, I don't want to do the full thermodynamics. I'm actually making uh, some propaganda for that course. <laughs> 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 I, I, I would like to whet your appetite. Uh, when, when, I, when I became a professor in physics uh, and they asked me what, what, do I, what do I want to teach? And I said I want to teach <laughs> statistical mechanics because I don't understand it. It's, 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 uh, it, it had been taught to me in a way which I could not understand. It was, it was, uh, but it's a beautiful topic and a lot of things, uh, including uh, cosmology, everything uh, makes use of statistical mechanics. Uh, we won't have time to do this, but we will need some concepts of statistical mechanics to understand and uh, let me end then this uh, uh, discussion with that. To understand something uh, which occurs over and over again, and that is how much energy can you get out of a system? If the sun shines on, uh, on the park here and we want to collect that energy, and we want to use it to make electricity how much can we get we know how much is shining we can we can measure that but how much of that can we really use and there is this this concept of efficiency uh, efficacy well, what is it fridge efficacy <laughs> Uh, uh, how much? How much can we? How much of that can we really use? And this is something which each of you in your topics will be uh, will be having to address. It, the reasons for this are very different. That you can't use everything. They are very different. But it is a reoccurring sub, uh, uh, concept uh, that you cannot. You cannot, in principle, not because you are stupid or something, in principle, you cannot 
use everything that is available in energy. For instance, those people who do, uh, who do, who do wind energy, uh, you could say how much energy is in the wind and that is something you have to calculate. How much energy is in it? But the question is, in such a windmill which goes like this all the time and extracts energy out of the mill, how much can you, how much can you extract? And there's some nice mathematics on that, people doing calculations and, and, and so on, and, and calculating limits of uh, the this, this sort of energy which you can extract from various systems. And it all has to do a little bit with thermodynamics. Uh, sometimes the picture is a little different, but it has thermodynamics in it. And this is why I started the mechanics course with this idea of looking at concentrating on losing the energy and retaining the energy and so on. And this, this will be a re re recurring uh, topic uh, as, as we go along. Okay, I must stop now. And I think you can have a bit of a break, but uh, just go up and... Uh, uh, Emma, do you, uh, you organize them, how, how they do? Hmm? Yeah. I don't mind if some of you come down here and work here. We can, we can move up and down. It's good for our own exercise to uh, move a little up and down. Uh, so if some wants to work here, that's okay. But others want to work in the, uh, in the lab, it's also okay. We will be at both places. Okay. Oh, so. I divided that there. A is equal to F0 sine phi divided by B over omega. Okay? And sine phi, I can calculate phi out of this as uh, our gentleman wanted to do uh, for us uh, with the arc and so on. But I do it in a, f in a quick way, uh, this way. Huh? Okay? Oh, that you can also do. Yeah. Yeah, you can do, you can do that too. Yeah. So there are many ways to, to do this. Uh, it's, it's, not, it's, it's not rocket science, we can, but we, we, we need to feel we can do that. Huh? Huh? Okay? Okay, so, oh, is there another question. Hey. How do I? The W. Damping. This is the damping. The damping comes in here because I have this term. Uh, and it, it, damps, it damps the uh, complementary function, it damps it to zero. Uh, but it also damps the anything uh, which I pu any pushes I put in, it, it damps them also. But I'm pushing more than it can, it can't kill uh, my total movement because I'm keeping on pushing. Okay? Any, o any other questions? Okay, tomorrow morning, we'll start here again. Uh, I will uh, tomorrow start with, uh, with a three-dimensional problem, and I'll do, uh, I'll, I'll do uh, the movements of planets, uh, but I'll do it a little different from what normally is being done. And 
and the end reason why I want to do that is I want to show you a specific symmetry uh, which is happens in classical mechanics and that that same symmetry if we go to quantum mechanics has another effect on in on 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 what we find in in, in quantum mechanics so so the concentration will but just be to find some way to work with three-dimensional problems and then uh, to be ready to apply it all of that to quantum mechanics where we will then do uh, uh, an atom and we will do band theory and we'll do things like that huh? okay so you can stay here or go up uh, just uh, as you wish <laughs>